<laughs> hey guys, welcome to the show, The Process. Today we have a great show going on. It's on vendors and their role in sterile processing. Today we have Salindra Bearfield, Alessandra Nicholson, and Nathan Cote from Arc Medical. Welcome, guys. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Good. All right, all right. So before we get into the show, we're going to let everybody get ready and get on. We're going to take a 30-second break. Okay, guys, we're back, and today's topic is vendors, their role in stellar processing. And I know everyone on the panel here has had uh, interactions with vendors, um, positive and negative, but we really want to bring out the positive tonight and basically um, get some insight on the vendor's role, what what their, what their a career path to becoming a vendor is, and um, how successful you can be becoming a vendor. So Mr. Nathan Cote is here um from arc medical um tell us a little bit about yourself and what's your speciality yes uh well uh thanks for having me again and, and uh, i've been involved in the medical sales world uh 16 17 years or so you know uh with majority of my focus in sterile processing infection control um even gi and or as well but um the last seven years i've been an independent and uh, what that means is that I, I basically have my own company and I represent multiple companies, multiple manufacturers. And um, so it's, it's, it's a balance, but it's, you know, I do work for myself, but I, want, I also represent multiple companies. So I got to make sure I provide my, the proper time to those companies. And I got to make sure that those companies provide the proper support as well that I can take back to you guys, you know, to my customers to make sure that it's, it's that they're supported uh, to the full extent. Uh, I have, um, I'm married, I got three boys, eight, six, and two, hence my, I just came right from baseball practice, but, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, coaching my kid. yeah, I'm feeling, so, yeah. Um, but that's, that's a quick background. You know, I, a couple of companies I represented Metrex, Carl stores. So I've been in the OR, I've, I've been down and actually I was a CRCST at one point, believe it or not. Um, Wow. So I've been, yeah, yeah. When I was with Metrics, they they put us through the Purdue online, and I did my hours, and I did all that good stuff. I was certified. I got you know for two years, and then I you know uh, then I left the company, and obviously I didn't uh, keep it up. But uh, I'm in the process of getting my CCSVP, so I, um so I will get that at least. You know, I still got to do hours, but you know, so I I had some experience you know, down and dirty, you know, with you guys. <laughs> um, but that's that's my background, and, and I really love my focus of sterile processing. I I, I truly believe it's the heart of the hospital. Uh, I will argue that to to till I die. Um, but I, I really do believe that, and and I love providing solutions to help you guys out um, the best of my the best of my ability. Yeah. So, and that's and I'm based in Pennsylvania, if that matters, but. There I am. It does matter. Pennsylvania is the best state in That's the right. USA. <laughs> oh, Sarah, so. you must be in Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Let's go. E A G L E S. Oh. Um. <laughs> I'm from Massachusetts originally. So say oh, man. Come on. Oh. Come on. Yeah, I don't um. even relate to any of that. I'm from Cali. <laughs> All right. See you later. So, enough of that. So, um, so I've known you for a long time now. You've yeah. brought me many new products, uh, very fresh products uh, off the um, production line, so to speak. Um, what is the, uh, and uh, this is my first question. You guys could chime in and ask many questions. What is the product you believe changed the industry that you have sold um, in the past few years? So I, uh, the cleaning verification products from HealthMark. So, you know, to be specific, the TOSI, Sonicheck, they're, um, you know, they came out with the cart wash check, but the, the TOSI product um, is the first product to market that really 
was a cleaning verifier to make sure that your washers worked properly before the standards even even said to do so it, you know and to this day it's still the gold standard you know it's synonymous with kleenex as like kleenex and tissues you know Sidex and glutaraldehyde, you know, Xerox and copiers. Like people, people tell me, hey, I use Toasty, and they go in there they're using something else. It's just that's how mm. good that product is. That's how well known it is. That I believe that changed the industry to help to make sure that your equipment, you know, is working properly. That it can provide a clean instrument. And as you guys know, right? You can't sterilize dirt, so you have to have a clean instrument Woo! in order to provide a sterile instrument. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So I think their line of products, and, and 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 the one thing I like to say to my customers that they're a truly independent verifying company, meaning they don't sell a piece of equipment to go with their cleaning verifier. They don't mm. care whose equipment you're using. They don't care. They just know that they developed that particular product to make sure that that product, that that machine you're using gives you the outcome that you're supposed to give based on you know, the standards and the IFU that, it, it, you know, in best practices all wrapped in. Wow. And how critical, how critical is that um, when we're talking about products being manufactured that it can actually move between companies and vendors and still provide the same testing and efficacy? Right. So now, you know, I kind of now I might, might kick myself, but, you know, I, I'm a little biased, but, but I've, I've seen all the products up that, you know, I've seen the testing products. So if you're, if you're going to, one thing I talk about is, is looking at what are you trying to do? So if you're trying to clean an instrument, okay, great. That's the first step. Well, what is that instrument made out of? What are you trying to clean? What machine are you putting it into? You know, a Sonic is totally different than your automated washer, right? We all know that. You know, the cleaning ability of a sonic is the cavitation process. If you have no cavitation, then that sonic's a big hunk of metal that fills up the water. Yeah. You know, so you want to make sure it's cavitating properly. You know, your washer has five different steps involved. Different temperature parameters, different chemistries going into it. So you got to make sure that all those parameters are met. So you got to have a test that, that's designed for that. And Amy talks about using a surrogate device, right? So... If you're using a surrogate device, that that's that's that means same, similar, as best as you can match it. It's, it's so if you're cleaning blood off stainless steel, why shouldn't you use a test that re is representative of what you're trying to do? Yeah. You know, if you're using a sonic machine and it's cav, it's supposed to cavitate at a certain frequency. Why not use a, p a a test that tells you it's cavitating at a specific frequency? So, you know, if you're trying to detect blood, why are you going to use an ATP's test? Why not use a test that tells you you have blood on it you know that's a hemoglobin right. so to me you know we talk there's many competitors and the you know big big factor that comes into it is cost and i understand that but it's also how you overcome the cost the cost objection is is, is well is is four dollars worth risking a patient's life because you want to save money on a test that doesn't give you the right results that you want mm -hmm. Does it make Obviously, difference? it still it still is. Do you, you know? find, mm -hmm. do you find when you're out and you're going from you know facility to facility and you're meeting with these different SPD managers, do you find that there's a large disparity in what they're looking for? Like, do you feel like they have the knowledge to evaluate the products that they need? The answer is yes. Majority of them, I believe, they have the knowledge to provide to get to make the best decision possible. But I also feel there's restraints that just unfortunately they can't if they don't have support from above yeah they're not going to give them what they need most of the time if they don't have the proper budget they're not going to get what they need most of the time mm -hmm. so it's not just you may have someone that is full bore standards wants the best you know make sure that they have what they need but if there's a wall between them and the, the person supporting them above it's just not gonna. It's, it doesn't matter what they do. They can bang their head against that wall all day long. It's not gonna happen. And I, and I could beat my head against the wall, supporting them, providing them documentation, support, literature. It doesn't matter, you know. And I will continue. I will give them whatever they need to help that decision. I will continue to do that. But there has to be some type of of support from their director, whoever it may be, peri-op director, director of surgical services, whatever the title may be. 
Um, and it ha that working relationship has to be there because that it someone's going to have to justify a difference in cost. You know, and I, I bring up cost. Maybe you guys aren't aware, but like HealthMarks products, it, the, the, they're not the, the least expensive. You know, they're not really the most expensive either, but they're not. That's the biggest challenge I come up with. So I come against is, is cost. And and as a rep, as a vendor, you have to have a product that's going to give you the results to justify that cost. It mm -hmm. has to have that support. I, you know, I'm like, hey, buy this five dollar widget. Why? Well, I don't know. It's because it's, <laughs> it costs us five dollars. You know. Uh, okay, thank you. You know, see you later. Right. So, um, I think there has to be a big, a lot of support around the sterile processing manager, and and most of the times the manager makes the final decision, but not really. I mean, right. lead, lead techs. You know, they they get a lot of leeway in some hospitals to say, look, I believe in your decision making. I believe or supervisors, lead techs, you know, they're it's it's that's I think that's a big problem that vendors make is that they focus on that manager and that director and mm. and they don't go to just the techs. They don't go to the lead tech. They don't go to the supervisors and get their opinions and their feedback and ask well, what's wrong. What do you guys need? What, what are you missing? How can I help? I think that's a big a big miss on a lot of vendors mm -hmm. is that they don't spend the time to go talk to the other people. So, um, mm -hmm. and find out what is it? What is it? Is it something, where can I go to help get you what you need? Do I have to go to infection control to right. get them on board? Right. A lot of times, yeah, when it comes to cleaning verification or, or, or you know, anything with cleaning and the word disinfection, right? That if they, if the infection control supports you guys, they usually get what they want in my experience and that's and that's a big someone that that, that can support you guys is, is the infection control absolutely i agree 100 in terms of education what is your role is it voluntary do you have to provide certain education every year per your per your industry per your for your account um how does your education work or is it uh, based on um facilities asking you to come in and educate so, uh, yes and no. So, yeah, I, I love educating. I love doing in-services. Um, HealthMark has a parameter. They have, num you know, they, they, they their number is 12, one a month, one in-service a month, educational in-service. That's their, you know, baseline, you know. And, and to me, that's, if you're not doing one a month, I mean, I, 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 but... <laughs> My in services provide health mark in services provide a credit. Case Med allows reps to also provide in services that give credits. And to me, that is more important than just scheduling a 15 minute meeting. If I can, if I can say, hey, I want to stop in, I want to, you know, show you what's new, but look, let's let's schedule a time where I can do an in-service as well. It makes it more beneficial, not just for the manager, because that's times of the essence, but for the staff now that now I can go in and talk with the staff, like I just mentioned, and, and build start building that relationship with the staff, the supervisors, lead techs, get to know them, joke around, whatever, do my education, um, and then build that relationship. So the more education I can do, the more I love doing. I mean, I almost every, I probably try to schedule so many in services, educational in services that is, um, and that's totally different than a product in service. So if you buy a product for me. I'm going to do an in-service, how the product's used, how do you clean it, you know, here's the support material, whatever. That's different. Educational in-services are, are what I love to do because, if one, it helps me learn. If I, My goal is to get you guys to, to learn one thing. That's it, one thing. Because some of these things are so redundant um, that, you know, people are like, oh, man, you know, I just I know that stuff. But I got to find something different that they don't know. And that's what I love. That's the challenge I love because standards change all the time. Guidelines change. Uh, maybe I pick something up new from one of you guys talking at, at a different facility. You know, referencing other facilities in my in service is the big thing. I don't, I don't do it by name. I never do that. I never say, hey, this hospital does this. But it's a learning experience. Like I saw this. You know, this this may help you guys at this hospital. It helped this hospital. You know, it helped a, you know a local another local hospital. And so if you're not in those departments and not engaging yourself um through in services educational in services and just discussions um no one's gonna learn and that's what it comes down to it's all about educating and learning 
And that's why I love doing in-services. So I, I probably do about 50 to 60 in-services a year. And that doesn't, that doesn't count the two shifts that I do. You know, you typically I, they want me to come in at a seven and a three, right? Or something like that. So mm-hmm. if you really, I, I, it's almost like a double, I do double that because I'll, I'll do a seven and a three, but that only counts as one in-service. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do I do remember you from um when I worked at the twenty four hour facility. Um yes. we had to schedule f- three in services for right. each shift. So we tried six, to seven and three. Yeah, <laughs> six. We tried to do one at six, one at seven, and one at three ish three. Yeah, two thirty three. Yeah, whatever it yeah. was, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that's difficult to do. Um it, it is. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of um career path. How do you move up from a tech? How would one move up from a technician to being a sales rep? Very. I mean, I, I, um, I hate saying this. The whole needing a degree thing to me is, um, I don't, <laughs> I don't. Know, someone, someone might get mad. I don't know if whoever's listening, but <laughs> I don't. I don't believe you need a degree. I feel experience is way more, way, way, way far and above than a piece of paper. Right. I mean. It, Hey, for instance, right? This is my diploma, from my 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 college diploma, still in the same envelope <laughs> that I got in two thousand three. I never took it out. But he asked for that, huh? <laughs> they asked for it, right? You know, right? My I I hired. I have a, a sales rep that works for me now, and uh, he has no degree. Um, but I've known him for a couple of years. He's got great. Just overall, I think he has. It. Like he, he he could deal. He understands how to talk to people. He's determined. He knows um, that. It, my biggest thing: if you don't know it, don't try. Don't pretend. Right. Just please ask the question. What's that? I say I tell my tech all the time. Please just ask the question. Yes. Yeah. Just, you know, if someone asks you, say I don't know. I'll go find it though. You know, mm-hmm. I'll get back to you. I, I'll get you that answer. And and anyway, so you know, he doesn't have a degree. Uh, you know, he is an independent and, and, um, but he meets all of the characteristics that I, that I want in a sales rep. And that's why I hate this whole, I will say, unfortunately, some, some, the big blocker in getting, becoming a sales rep is that, that, that degree. And it's like, you're going to tell me a, te- a, a tech that has 20 years experience mm-hmm. is, is not as good as someone who just came out of college, maybe has one year of sales experience, but, mm-hmm. but because he has that degree, that's that, or she is better. I mean, I absolutely not. I mean, I, I mean, you cannot teach experience. Right. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Can't see at least not in a four year. And that, no. those, those aren't the skills that you're looking for. So when you talk about the guy you hire, you say he has the characteristics you're looking for in a sales rep. What are those? If I'm, mm-hmm. you know, trying to check off the list to see if I got what it takes, what do I have to do? Right. So, uh, Definitely hard worker, determined, responsible, you know, the kind of the typical things, but really um, organized is a big thing. You know, I represent five companies. I, <laughs> I, I got to stay organized. I got to know wh- which customer I just spoke to about mm-hmm. what. And, and, you know, so organization's key and um, definitely not babying, meaning I, I don't need a hand. I don't want to handhold someone. I will educate, I will learn, I will teach, I will, uh, uh, you know, do whatever I need to do to make you get to a point where I feel comfortable leaving you alone and go on your own. And just, you got to learn what I learned back in the, you know, your, everyone, your first job, you remember how nervous you were and, yes. <laughs> and you're sweating and whatever, you you know, you just, you're new. You just don't know. You, you know, who do I talk to? What, you know, where do I go? Or you don't, you feel nervous about talking to someone. I mean, it, it takes a lot. And the people, the companies that say, Hey, you're going to be the best salesman in one year. That, that's to me, that's BS. It's impossible. You, you cannot go from brand new to the best in a year. Right. There's always room for growth. There's always room to, to be experienced and, and, or to gain experience. Excuse me. So to me that, that whole, when I cut the cord, when I let you go to be on your own, I need to know that I don't have to call you every day and say, hey, who'd you go see today? Or, mm-hmm. you know, the results are in the numbers when, he come, when it comes to sales. And the results are in when you when I go to account, when I call a customer or 
they know me by name or they 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 or they reach out to me that's when you know you are, are becoming successful your customers are finally hey this nate's my go-to guy or, or chase is my go-to guy that's his name chase but you know that's that's to me that's someone that i can believe in to go out there and um and do the job without me handholding them is is it's it's maybe it's, it's, something hard to to really find in someone because you have yeah. to i had this i knew him for a couple of years so i didn't know and i knew i needed to hire someone so i didn't really know and, and i couldn't find anybody that was experienced i talked to a, a few people and um i was like you know what i don't need experience because i can i can teach someone that doesn't know the industry right from the start that's and that's great but if i had someone that an spd tech I don't have to teach them what Amy is. I don't have to teach them what Isham is. I don't have to teach them what a what a Cryle is. I don't have to teach them what a DNC set is. I don't have to, right. you know, all those things. All those. I don't teach them what a salt, what cavitation means. Like I, right. you know, so one big thing is if they're going to go into the medical world, try to go to the same realm that they just came from. So selling to a sterile processing, a company that sells products based on sterile processing, infection control. That's that's your guys' bread and butter. So. That's the experience that may get them far and above someone with just a degree, mm -hmm. um, and that that and I hate to say it, but that's going to be the challenge. That that stupid piece of paper is a challenge. Um, <laughs> I, well, I mean, where you want to go? Luckily, we do. I mean, indus industry wise, we're seeing a lot more SPD techs with bachelor's degrees, from correct? All kinds of backgrounds. Yes. Um, you know, so that's a good thing. And then, like you were saying, if you you you're a tech and you've been in this field for so many years, you do have valuable information and you can share with these companies or you know utilize in different ways. So it's good to think outside the box. It is, you yeah. know, and companies are offering to help with your degree too. Like, all right, we you don't have it now, but look, work towards it. Maybe you know, and we're gonna help pay for. It. I'm starting to see that too. So it's out there they're not it's on every company but they're out there and i feel the companies that are dedicated to sterile processing are the ones that get it um and and it, it's 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 happening and you know it is happening i've helped people become clinical specialists over the last seven years i've been independent you know, if there's an opening in the companies i represent mm -hmm. hey you know go for it here it is and I, I think that's one of the things Isham, Isham definitely needs to work on getting our social educations recognized a little more seriously right. so that we're, because a surgical technician will definitely get a manager's job versus a uh, SPD technician who has 10, 15 years experience. Mm -hmm. So, because um, that certification isn't as recognized as a surgical tech. So um, we need to, I think Isham needs to play a part in and beefing up the recognition for these certifications and not just looking at them as uh, someone without high school, you know, minimum, you know, a basic high, high, school, high school education and a certification that really doesn't mean much. So when you show that certification, you could show three, four, or five, and they'll look at you like, oh, that's nice. Dude, right, that's, that's nice. Really, <laughs> <laughs> that's nice, you're interested in what you do, but it really doesn't mean anything in terms of getting a job. So um i really think until that changes you'll definitely need more education um in addition to the experience and cell processing so um I like it's, so a, I it's a twofold problem though because i mean it's not that um you know hospitals don't recognize the crcst like most places are now starting to mandate you either have mm -hmm. cbspd or crcsc um but i think one of the issues that plagues the certification if you don't get the consistency in the, you know, in the person that shows up. Yes. So mm. I could have mine, you could have yours, but right. I come in and I know every mm -hmm. area you come in and maybe you can only do two or three. Mm -hmm. So it's like we have to find some kind of way to set some consistency so that the person knows when I get a CRCST, True. I get a tech that knows how to do this work. <laughs> true. Yes. Very true. Very true. Yes. Yep. So and, and, um, brand and, uh, Question, let me go back a year or nine months or six months. So what has the pandemic done to your, your in terms of business, in terms of being able to visit facilities, in terms of having to sell product? Yeah, it, you know, in the first, of course, three months, four months, uh, four months, yeah, March to 
July, really, it, it, it shut everything down. I mean, it was probably about 40, 50% drop. Most of my stuff, you know, I need surgeries to happen in order for it to provide cleaning supplies, brushes, containers, whatever, you know. So when those shut down, it hurt. It hurt everybody. Um, not, you know, not just me, but, you know, it, 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 but once surgeries came back, things started, you know, as far as volume and sales volume and what people needed started increasing but the problem you know was that you you still couldn't go into facilities so i couldn't do my in services i couldn't do you know show you new products you know and to me you know if i said hey here's here's a piece of literature of a new product that's totally different than me bringing that product in and showing you how it works what it looks like and, and that's what i love doing is that interaction so it, it's this the, the the last year really I think it kind of hurt you guys more too, not just me, but like you, the, the cutting edge technology stuff, you know, a piece of literature or reading an article about it is totally different than actually getting that in front of you and, 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 and uh, uh, putting your hands on it. Right. And, and, and seeing how it works. So it hurt uh, facilities, restrictions, restricting access all last year. It started to lift in probably September, October, at least in Pennsylvania, my territory. Um, and then all of a sudden, like Thanksgiving hit and shut down again. Boom, right? that spike, right? So everything shut down again through the holidays. Um, I was able, facilities started getting on board with the whole virtual stuff, right? Zoom, Microsoft Teams, um, whatever they could do. So I was doing virtual in services, which was cool. So I was able to do that. That's um, really nice. Yeah. I had a lot of struggles with that. Um, some companies just refuse to participate in what, like, you know, virtual education. Oh, Which wow. is, yeah, mind blowing. But you're right. There were some that, like, uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know vendors that said, yeah, I can't even do any in services. They won't let me. My company won't won't give me a Zoom account. I won't do this. And I said, well, why don't you pay for your own Zoom account? You know, I, yeah. You know, I, and which I did, I have, I paid my own Zoom account so I can have as many member. You know, because Zoom is not, it's free, but it, it restricts you. So anyway, right. you know, I pay for that stuff. It's like you know, uh, and and Health Mark was like, all right, yeah, you're not in person, but we're gonna give the credits because you still presented the in-service, you still did the in-service, you know, so they, luckily they did it. To, you know, Case Med was was very um, accommodating as well to the virtual in-services, but it, it still wasn't hit or miss. It wasn't like my what it, what it was before the pandemic. This year, beginning of this year, it's starting to get better, but there's still hospitals that are, hey, we don't want you in unless we tell you to come in because we need something specific. So it's challenging for me it, it, right now to get a consistent schedule. And that's, that's, I, I don't like that because I, you know, if I, if I go to a certain city and there's six hospitals that I always like to stop in when I go there that day, I can't do that. I can't, I, I have to either have an appointment or the hospitals are shut down, uh, not letting vendors in. So I, I don't have that consistency. I, you know, I'll drive an hour and a half, meet with one or two pl places and I have to drive back and I, and uh, it, it's tough. If that's the challenge right now I face as a vendor is still seeing my customers and providing the service that I'm used to providing. Um, but the in-service are picking up. You know, May is a, a, obviously a big uh, month for recertification. Yeah. So I do get, yeah, so I'm getting a ton of calls, you know, hey, I need you to come do an in-service. I'm like, you know, see you. Yeah, I mean, so like, you know, I've been emailing you for the last six months to get me on your schedule, and I can't just come mm -hmm. in tomorrow. So, right. so um, that you know, that is the thing is scheduling. You know, I people don't understand. I I'm not just sitting here waiting to go into your hospital tomorrow. I'm, like I'm, I'm booked right. out two weeks, three weeks. I try to get my schedule filled so I I know where I'm going, and if I can squeeze you in, great. If you know, um, but they get mad. sometimes they get mad. They're like, oh, we can't come in tomorrow. I'm like, no. I'm like. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to see, you know, I have, a, I have, a, I have a 106 hospitals and, 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 you know, 100 surgery centers. And, like, I can't just drop that, you know, so. Nice. So, so you mean some of, of the SGD managers have unrealistic expectations? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Did you find through the pandemic that there was anything that um, became successful? I mean, like, we talked a lot about, um, you know, everything that went wrong during the pandemic, but. Did you see anything that really, you know, took off because of the pandemic? Um, well, from from a from a relationship standpoint, actually, the virtual 
the virtual world actually helped big time. I feel like that took off on my end because I still was able to connect with my customers, still able to provide them a service, still able to show them. I was, I was doing product demonstrations like this, you know, mm -hmm. here's my product and open the water bottle. Like I was still doing it. It's not exactly how I want it, but it was still giving them the, the attention and able to show them something that maybe they needed or didn't know it was out there. Mm -hmm. So the virtual world, I would say was definitely what came, what was the best that came out of this pandemic that some of my customers actually liked the virtual. I can get this customers. I couldn't get in front of, in person, but now yeah. I can get to them through this. Just you know, yeah, we'll set up a quick fifteen minute Zoom call or Microsoft, whatever. Face even FaceTime. I got a FaceTime call tomorrow morning with the with the nurse manager. So it's like, but you know, um, a GI manager. But um, it may it does it has made it a little bit easier to actually get in front of customers. So I will say that that that's definitely the big help as far as getting in front of customers. Mm. So I have a question in terms of. You said you have a lot of meetings now. Who do you normally meet with? Do you meet with the supervisor, the director, um, the surgeon, um, CEO? Who do you normally meet with to try and sell product? Almost all of the above. I mean, I, I there are doctors that I still meet with. There are some products that they may want to be involved in. Um, but supervisors, educators, super, uh, lead techs, um, directors, managers, you, you, you name a title, uh, nurse manager, uh, like a clinical specialist, there's there's peri-op manager, peri-op director, director of surgical services. There are all different types of titles out there. Um, but I try to meet with all of them. Like I mentioned, I mean, there's not, not one person uh, can make the exact, you know, make the, maybe, maybe in some hospitals there's one person makes the decisions, but there's, there's all those people I mentioned have input. Influence, yeah. Yep. Input and influence. They all can tell me something, and I can all tell them something. So what? I, when do you, when do you take no for an answer? There are times you take no. You know, so that's a big part of reading. I think of being a good rep is is knowing when that person is either disinterested or uh, looking at you like you're wasting my time, like stop talking to me. So that's a big, that's, and that's a hard thing to do. That's, that's based on experiences, knowing when, you know, when you're talking to someone and it, it starts off good and then they start really just looking off or fingering through or their papers, emails. Yeah, <laughs> email, they're looking at their phone, like, Oh yeah, that's the, those are the signals that you gotta, either you gotta shut it down, you know? And, uh, um, so it, I, I can, there's only, there's, so that's one part of it is knowing when they're disinterested and, and when just to shut it off. Like, to, to, okay, thank you for your time. I, I, you know, maybe I spoke too much. I apologize. I'll follow up with you. You know, knowing when to end it because if you keep going, you can just keep burning that bridge and things that keep go going off. And they're gonna say, you know what, you're on the bad list. You're, you're I'm not mm -hmm. returning your calls, your emails. You don't want to get on that list. Right. But, but t when you take no, there is difference between challenging someone and and challenging someone the right way, I should say, and challenging someone the wrong way. Meaning you better, if you're going to challenge someone because they don't want to use your product, you better have support, not just because your product's better, but you understand what Amy is, you know, if it's SD 79, 91, 54, whatever, you know, 90, whichever policy you're going to, that standard that you can reference and to, to say, you know, um, I just bring up Amy, but like you got to yeah. understand it's not just, your product literature, that's the Kool-Aid, you know, that's the company Kool-Aid. Right. You got to take everything else, why that product's going to help that person in that department, reference the standards, reference the guidelines, you know, and, and, and really filter that in. So you, you can challenge someone that way and have a, a great conversation and explain to them. I have that conversation all the time with Tosi and the competitors, all honestly, all the time. And um, even current customers say, like, I got to switch. I got to, I got to reduce my budget. Your products are expensive. I got to cut costs here. And my job is to go in there and, and, and say, look, look, no, you, there's got to be something else because you're, you're going to cut costs here and ultimately put, you know, 
a patient it could be in danger because now you're using a, a product that's not going to give you the result that you want. That's troubleshooting a machine or troubleshoot your equipment to make sure the equipment gives you the output that you want. And, and those are really setting. the the hidden costs in SPD because right. you know you can have that product on a budget line and I can look at it and say, okay, by the case and by the each, you know, this is costing me blah blah blah. But on the back end, when that patient comes back for repeat surgeries or washouts or whatever the case may be, nobody calculates that into the cost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right. but it is money that we are spending, and oftentimes a lot more in comparison to what you could have saved if you had have gone with that higher price product that you were using in the first place. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. You know, absolutely it, it, tangible and intangible cost, and that's the mm -hmm. big thing. Too. And and some people get it, and some people don't. Um, but you know, that's part of, that's part of it. It, it. You're never in sales. You're never going to win a hundred percent of Jeez, If you did, I've been retired by now, you know, so but never, you know, you, you 15% of your, of what you do is a kind of a number it is what you're going to sell. It's crazy. It's, it's actually a really low number. Um, but it's, it's not about, to me, it's not about selling the product. It's, it's educating. I will tell a customer if one product's better than the other, uh, I have no problem with that. You know, I have no problem with my competition. I don't care. I don't badmouth the competition, you know, uh, uh, at all. Um, but when I believe my product's better, I'm going to give you the support and the documentation to let you know why it's better. Um, but if I feel there's a better product, a better solution for you guys, um, I'm going to tell you what that solution with that product is. And, and, that, and, that, and that just gains trust from your customers because they're like why well, you know he's not just here just for these specific companies he's really here to, to give us the best solution possible um and i get calls all the time about hey do you have this no but so and so does or i'll do the research online for the customers you guys don't have all the time in the world to figure out what, what what's out there and all that good stuff you know so um i do that for customers I, I, and that's a big part of being i think a good vendor, quote unquote, good vendor. But uh, we're not just salespeople, you know, you got to be a resource as well. Um, that separates that separates vendors, I feel, is the resource side of it. And um, Nathan, you said something earlier I picked up on. You said the follow up. I think yeah. that's a, a very important piece because I, I'll usually judge a vendor if they follow up. Um, right. If you don't, if you come and you pitch me a, a, a widget, and I said, okay, well, send me an email and I'll get back to you. And they don't follow up on that email. You know, I won't take them seriously because yeah. um, I think that's very important. I think it's extremely important in this day and day and age with, uh, you know, comp mini computers right here. There's no reason not to follow up. And the challenge though, with that technology is that the customers expect to follow up. It used to be, you know, I first started out 2003, you know, Emails were still, you know, very popular. Blackberries, all that good stuff. But it wasn't people. It it was okay if it was two, three days down the road that you followed up with them. It was okay. Then it kind of is. It's, it's coming down. It's twenty four hours. Is okay. Now it's one hour. Two. It's like hours. You know what I mean? They want the quote today. <laughs> right now. Right now. Now. So, now. Now. Right now. Yeah. So having you know having companies that can meet that demand of 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 now of needing it yesterday is also crucial if we're talking about maybe spd techs looking at companies and but customer support uh sales rep support it, people need that stuff now and, and that's one of the things i feel has made me pretty successful is that uh, uh i get to my i get back to my customers not just in two or three days but i get back to them within 24 hours and i really try 12 hours i mean that day if i can get back to them that day and it may not be the quote, maybe they can get back to me in time. Some companies, they want to give me the quote. I can't do it myself. So, okay. But at least I'll tell my customer, whatever, four o'clock, five o'clock. Hey, sorry, I didn't get the quote, but I'm, get, I'm, I'm getting it to you. That's That counts as a follow-up. You know, to me, it, maybe you guys would agree, but I at least I let them know, hey, look, sorry, I didn't get it in time, but it's coming. So it was still a point of contact to let them know that, that I am thinking of them and I am trying to provide them with what they asked me to do. Um, so follow up is, is extremely crucial. So if I'm looking for a candidate to hire, and I, I that that to me that's good. That, that that's a that would be a deal breaker. If they don't, 
if I email them and they don't get back to me, you know, in a day, it's it's to me that's like, mm, why do I want you dealing with my customers if you can't reply to me, someone that might be hiring you, uh, or or referring you? You know, that's a big thing too. If there's an opening somewhere and you say, hey, I might want to go take that job over there, and I. I, I weigh all those things I already talked about. I have to think about, do I really want to put my name on the line for that person? You know, and that's a big thing. That's a big thing. You know, referring someone is, is huge because if that person doesn't work out or, or uh, they, they treat the company bad. That's a bad reflection on you. That's, that's, you know, that's a negative. So, so yeah. in terms of uh, new products, what do you see as the next product uh, on the market that's going to be a big sale? Um, because you mentioned the Tosi, the Tosi test earlier. Um, what's the next Tosi test, in in your opinion? Now, come on, if I knew that, I would develop it. Right, <laughs> right. So Landry would be my <laughs> She'd be developer, right? Absolutely. So yeah. what's what's selling now? What's the new thing? Is it uh, endoscopes? Is it uh, yeah? Um, so it's um, swabs on the clean side for testing lumens. What's the next big thing? Yeah, I, I would say um, I, I honestly believe like um, drying and inspection products for flexible scopes. Yeah, that it, you know, that I think that's the next big change coming. If you're not doing cleaning verification of your flexible scopes, it's coming. If you're not drying the channels of your scopes, it, it's coming. So Listen, with something besides alcohol, y'all, please read these IFU. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the alcohol purge is not a dry. Doesn't dry. Not a dry. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. Uh, so mm, that's a whole other conversation. I mean, yeah. oh, I had a no, ten-second I mean, answer because you were saying, you know, sometimes things now we want that response so fast. But right. do you find that um, that sometimes it can be detrimental? Like, do we do facilities take enough time to evaluate a product and really see if it's something that is working for them, or do they kind of just look at it and go, "Well, that looks good. I think I'm going to go with it." Right. So now we're talking about the flip side, right? So the flip side of facilities, as far as follow up, I think no facilities need to do the due dil due diligence and look at. All competitors, I, I agree with that. Like, if you, you know, facility is really going to pick one over another, they better give each one the proper time and research. I mean, I had no facilities that just, oh, we have a contract with this company, so we're going to go buy, we're going to just continue to buy everything else they come out with. I'm like, well, you know, that's okay, but there's other <laughs> solutions out there, you know, that I know you want to standardize, right? That's a big goal. Is, I think of hospitals and networks and IDNs, you know, even departments standardized with, with companies, but that's, that's standardized to an extent. Yes. But there's going to be better solutions that you shouldn't restrict yourself and sign these contract quote unquote contracts that say, hey, I have to buy this stuff. Okay. Well maybe, you know, there's, there's always new products coming out, mm -hmm. you know, technology. It, it was every three years. It, it, it changed. Now it's like every year and a half. I mean, it's it's unbelievable how fast that stuff is going. When I was at Carl Storrs, they said every three years we'll have it's the technology going to change. You're going to have to you're going to spend millions of dollars now, and in three years you're going to spend millions of dollars again for all new equipment. It's 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 changing even faster now. It, it, so I feel hospitals should not lock themselves in with these long term contracts. And B, they definitely should evaluate properly because it's in three months, which some of these. Uh, uh, um, um, value analysis committees, you know, it, it could take three to six yes. months to, to get your product approved because it has to go through this process. But in six months, three to six months, things could change already in three to six months. It's kind of crazy. So where's that balance? I don't, I don't have that answer, but I think I agree. Hospitals should not make a, a, a quick decision just because they need to evaluate all the different options out there, or at least look at them, pick a couple, then evaluate those two, give the time to each of those products, you know, and, and work with those vendors and those companies to, to, to provide whatever trial product in services, make sure the staff can make their decision too. That's a big part, I think, is, is having, we talked about who do I call on, you know, having every staff member give their input, I think is crucial if that can happen. And, and um, during, in, during um, new product trials or whatever, 
it's because to have the majority of them or have them all give an opinion is great. And that makes you form the best decision. So I, I think that that's, that's, um, it, it, that's what really should happen. Is everyone should be involved in the decision process when it comes to certain majority of the products that they use. If they're going to be using it, why shouldn't they have an input? I mean, yeah, we talked about that in our last session of centering frontline staff. Right? They told, mm -hmm. If they're going to be the ones using the widget, let's ask them, <laughs> is this the widget for you? All right. <laughs> but what I noticed too, in my opinion, is that um, it's a lot of money to be made in our department in sterile processing. And as a result, it seems like that uh, we end up buying a little bit of everything just because we want to verify everything and we're not even sure what we're verifying. So we end up having a department full of stuff that doesn't even make sense. So I'll give you a point in case. Mm -hmm. I've been in departments where they're doing the toasties. Okay, I get that. Well, are you doing them on all levels? Probably not. And then they have little stickers to verify, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> that the temperature reached in the whole chamber of the, you know, the washer, which makes no sense. And so it's like, and then we got that. And then we got something to swap to make sure the instruments are clean. And then, you know, we're doing this and then we're doing that. And it's like, what are we doing all this for? It feel like people are making so much money off our, our industry over things that don't even make sense. It's like, do we even need all this stuff? I've been in departments where they have so many testing devices of all this crap and wipe and swab and clean everywhere. And nobody's really knowing what we checking for. So I think at some point, I think we need to step away from all the vendors. No disrespect to you, of course. No, I don't know. And find out what are we testing for and what are we really checking for. And I think a lot of times if we get to the point where we have the right people in there and they know what they're doing, then they know what we're checking for. But I think it's getting really, to me, out of control. And that's how I really feel about Isham. Even though I've never been to their um, Isham, whatever they have that goes on every year, it seems like it's a place for vendors to go to sell stuff. And I was like, how much more stuff do we need when you still look on the news and we still having dirty instruments and we still having scopes that are not even clean, but we, we got sonics here and this there and it is how much more stuff do we need? And we still not getting it right. Yeah. Hold, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah. I'm just saying, I've been quiet. I said, I need to say something good. Been, okay. I'm too quiet all night. I'm just yeah. going to take one in the corner and then snap. Okay. Oh, I got yeah, right. oh. yeah. <laughs> but no, it really is. It really is a good conversation. Nathan yeah. mentioned something earlier about there being kind of a gray area, right? Like you have your your uh, vendor IFU, which is the Kool Aid, as he called it. Yeah. But then you also have, you know, your Amy standards, your ARN standards, your your TRE, and everything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like from your perspective as an independent vendor, do you feel like there are spaces where there could be more concrete conversation being had? If so, where and why? Yeah, I, I think, well, I I like what so, so, so Andrew talking about all these tests, all this stuff, right? I mean, I think that's where the concrete having more concrete evidence to support, right? What are, why are we using this? What is it for? Um, do we need all of it? That's where it needs to, if you look at Amy, ARN, SGNA, they are all different. Mm -hmm. They, they, there's some similarities within them. Um, but let's, let's just look at scope cleaning verification. They're all three are different. All three. As far as frequency of testing, what to use as a test, and, and, and uh, you know, and and is it up to you? Or is it up to up to the company? As yes. far as to tell you, Those so are that's sad. that's a problem. They mm -hmm. have like I'm thinking about the gap analysis, and when we talk about hang times with scopes. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I it really, what I'm seeing is you decide as a facility. Yes. How long do you let that scope hang until you reprocess it? Correct. Is that the safest when we know that one in 31 patients have an HAI? And then like Solandra was saying earlier, flexible scopes have been on the radar for years at this point as being yes. very unsafe. Correct. <laughs> so now, as we come out with new things like the air purges and yep. you know, these four scopes, like yep. who should be making who should be making this this call? Is it FDA? Is it CDC? Is it SGNA? Who says 
this is what you do when you have a flexible scope. They don't know because everybody's trying to make money. That they are, they don't know. And what I will say about Nathan, let me go back what we talked about earlier. Um, as as being a vendor, you you the, the decisions you make comes with ethics, how you what you stand for and what you believe in. Mm -hmm. And that's something that sets you apart from a lot of people. You as a vendor, you're not representing one product. You may represent, you know, more than one product, but you're doing it from the heart and you're doing it in something you believe in. And that's the hard part. I understand you in sales and a lot of them are in sales, but it takes more than sales to really convey that you care, that you coming from the heart. We are the heart of the hospital. And if you come into us from the heart and we are the heart of the hospital, then it's like a whole nother communication going on. So to be a sales rep or whatever, or a vendor, it's more than just being a salesperson. It's having those interpersonal relationships. It's being able to communicate on a level that we can understand and understand that we are really there for a patient. So I think that's what sets you apart from pretty much from anybody else because you operate with integrity. And I think when we look for vendors, those are the people you need to look for, people that really care about what you're trying to accomplish. Because um, I'm going to call you Alessandra. Is it, okay, Alessandra, you had mentioned that before. You were saying that people sell you a product and then if you need tech support or you need any support after that, they're gone. Oh my gosh, did you yes. get the contract for this, baby? Oh, oh yeah, that's our product inside of your department. <laughs> but did you sign up for that? Oh, I'm sorry. You're going to have to call Biomed. Right? Really? So we, I will we, say, Nathan, from our previous conversation, it's like he's operating from a whole nother level oh, when it comes to sterile process. And we definitely um, love and uh, respect that. And then you mentioned health mark, too. And I kind of want you to touch on that as well, because you said if you can sterile process and you have an idea or a product, you have people out there that are willing to listen to those innovations and no idea and your creative side. So if you can speak on that a little bit, because I believe you stand behind something bigger than yourself, Nathan. I, I appreciate that very much, really. Um, hold up, hold up. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, 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 thank you. Um, and that is part of separating, you know, I, I do try to act ethically and and, and, um, and loyally as well. So it, it it's not about, I love what I do, you know, making money supports my family. That's it, you know, you know, cool. If I can, do a couple other things. All right, great. But that's I, my goal is not the, the the dollar sign. That's just not me. Um, representing the proper companies to provide the proper solutions in what I believe. Mm -hmm. That's as simple as it gets for me. Um, but but also, like I already mentioned, you guys, are, are, I love of love, love SPD, and that's and, and to me, that's I truly believe that's 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 the that's the uh, the heart of the hospital, like you said. So. But going back to, you know, health mark and, and how do they help customers and, and is there if you have an idea, how do they go about it? I mean, it's it's real simple. Hopefully you have a, you know, or create, you know, especially you, Solander, Solander with uh, your new um, position in Jacksonville. But if you can create that relationship with your with your health mark rep, too, they should be able to help guide you in that respect. Um, if not, health mark, can, you can be reach them direct. Honestly, just start from scratch. You know, the cold call, good old cold call from your end. Say, hey, I I like to talk to someone about a product idea. They will get you in touch with the proper person for to listen to you. That's that's the biggest step. And they're that's why I love that company. They they are so open armed, family run, um, totally dedicated to you guys. Totally supportive of you guys. I mean, when I started on board, it was two educators. Now there's eight educators. Mm. So they're constantly growing at education. That's what they're always about is education. They are. They have the most literature that I've ever seen that supports all their products. You're not, you're not going to have one product that they sell that's not going to have more than one, that, that will have uh, one piece of documentation to support it. They have more than one. Every piece of every product they have, they have multiple pieces of literature support. Their product. It is so easy to access. Mm. Um, I don't have to have a one source subscription. Yes. I can literally just go on Google, type in Healthmark, and find my ISUs 
Um, and one other thing, I mean, I, I know we weren't we weren't intending to go into a health mark love fest, but mm-hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. just from a resource perspective, one of the things that I love as a manager is that they have this points program. So that if I am a, a customer of theirs and I'm buying products from them and they have tons of great, you know, great products. Um, but if I'm buying products from them, every dollar that I spend, I get points towards education. So I can use that to buy books for my staff. I can use that oh. to send them to conferences. Um, so that's a, a product that's out there that's in stark contrast to what we were talking about last week, yes. which is we have contract these companies that are now putting into their OEM contracts that if SPD doesn't go with them as a repair company and they send their products off to cheaper third party repair, they then do not have access to free education outside of what you were saying earlier, the education of um, I bought a new product and I'm getting an in-service versus you're coming in and you're providing consistent education to keep the skill sets up. So, you know, having this this company that's really um, SPD focused, have free education, have eight educators as part of their you know company, have this points program to proliferate education within SPD versus other big companies that are going this route of, you know, basing on the dollar and whether or not they can keep that money in house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, she but, definitely deserved that. <laughs> but Nathan, you were holding out on me. I, you didn't tell me about that program. What's, what's going on with that? Uh, what? Ooh, I got this <laughs> <laughs> I, had a feel, I had a feeling you were going to say that. <laughs> it's a thing. So, I know. So, guilty, right? I, I just went over this with a customer yesterday. Uh, what's today? Thursday. Yes, yesterday. Well, Andy, he was talking to somebody else about it. Oh, not, wow. not no, you. They, 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 they called me out yesterday. I said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I did an in-service. And she said, what's up with this SPD points? I said, <laughs> and I tell you? I, I said, no. I said, oh. Mm. So... Yeah, that is um. It's a, don't worry, Denard. I'll get to, you'll get your your points. You know, coming now. Start, start of the year. All right, cool. Yeah, the first cool. of the year. All right, all right. Yeah, so I was part of planning life. on not buying some stuff, but now I'm gonna buy um, <laughs> some things from um from you guys. Yeah, I, sometimes I get caught up with everything else I'm talking about. I just I you know that is one thing I do uh uh need to I should say definitely yeah. bring it more. I mean I have. Uh, like sixty of my hospitals out of the hundred and eight on SPD points, so I, I, I just, I do, I do. There's more, and you're one of them that already the Holy Redeemer. So, because uh, I, I hook you up, brother. You know, we can't talk about it on air, but you know, we have a little <laughs> thing going on. You know, so I brought, I brought you some donuts last time. We're okay. Yeah, you got some donuts. donuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was a good in service. I have to um, let you know. So now I'll provide right. you. If you, we, you if do we give have a good any. If we have any other vendors listening, SPD does not want your pizza. Anymore. Right. <laughs> okay. We just a, it's a public service pizza. announcement. We do not want your pizza yeah. anymore. Okay. Thank you. We don't. <laughs> so, we don't. So <laughs> give, give us a taco. Give us a burger. Give us something else. Okay. Mix it up. Yeah, no taco. <laughs> so Nathan, what's your? Because I've gotten a lot of cold calls. Hey, mm. I'm calling from so and so. We have something to sell you. Um, what's your email? Yeah, yeah, and you know, so what's the appropriate way? Talk speaking to vendors and others out there listening right now. What's the appropriate way to give a cold call and make it successful? You get a call for, with a reason. I mean, not this. Hey, I want to get a call. I want to get your email. I mean, okay, why? I mean, so when I, you know, when I call new people, a big part of of a cold call for me is, is the in service education piece. Because it, it, I'm not selling you anything with an in, educational in-service. I'm not. I mean, I'm providing a service for you and your staff. So for me, or to talk to any other vendor out there, if your company offers something besides the product, that's what I would lead with. Like, it, you know, mm-hmm. Denard is Nate Cody with Healthmark. Uh, I haven't met you yet. I would love to come in and meet you. Can I can I send you some information on on some educational in-services that I can provide for you and your staff? You know, is, is that okay? You know, with that you think that would be a benefit. If that already puts that guard down. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't ask you. Hey, can I send you? You know, literature on the newest, latest, and greatest product that we just came out with. Okay, great. You know, no. I mean, the wall's up. If you're, you know, what? Why? why? Most people aren't going to give you their their email, or even if they do, you send an email, it's just delete. You know, mm-hmm. delete. 
So a vendor that's out there, you know, if you don't have education to give, or that's fine. If you don't have an in-service to give, that's fine. If that cu if that customer is not using your product, that's fine. Then you got to go into know that hospital, ask them. Um, what I would do is ask them, you know, once again, in same introduction that you would do, like, look, I represent this company. We, we, we do have a great new product and explain some real quick in 15 to 20 seconds. You know, everyone mm -hmm. says that real quick, but why is that product going to help their department and where is it going to help their department? Where is it going to get that interest for that manager to say, all right, yeah, send me, send me an email. I do want to see some more literature. You tell me that that, that brush is going to clean my acetabular reamers a lot faster so I have less biofilm on it or less bio burden on it, you know, than what I'm currently using. Yeah, of course I want to see that. If, if you're going to speed up my process, I would think you guys would at least look at it and, 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 and read about it. I mean, so if that's, if that's the benefit of my product that how is it going to help your department specifically? That's what they got to lead with. Not, Hey, I, have a, I want to send you literature on this new product because uh, it just came out. It's brand new from XYZ company. Uh, there's no benefit for you. There's nothing no. that's going to help you out. In closing, guys, you have any questions for Nathan? I think we are, we are exhausted, Nathan. I think <laughs> I know. I can talk. I can talk about this all day. Right, know. he can go all night, kind of thing. Um, so, I think for me, um, the the last thing I want to ask is just around. Uh, or refocusing around techs being able to move into this independent space. Yeah. Um, one of the things that you mentioned while we were um, in the green room is as an independent rep, you can't just say, okay, I'm taking off my CRCST badge and I'm going independent. Mm -hmm. How does somebody practically plan to make the leap from working in, the, in a full-time SPD tech role into repping? Right. I mean, I, I, I I think that that's probably one of the challenges if they if they could jump to a, a different shift where they could focus time during the day or um, reduce hours. That's going to be the challenge because you still need a, to, to build that company up or that product up or whatever. If you're if you're going to jump to independent, you still got to give time to both in the beginning. I feel unless you get lucky and you get you get a company that has a, you know existing product base. And it does have existing income, so to speak, into that territory, then that, that makes the transition a lot easier. But that's the balance, and that's the hard part. Is if you're, if you're the hospital, say, yeah, I'll, you know what, I can I can cut you down to part time, and and that gives that time to that to tech to to focus and, and learn that new product and call on customers. And that that's the way to do it, where they could still live but continue. It, it, to go per pursue the independent world and, and build that that territory it, it is challenging um if they have a nest egg obviously that helps but 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 in reality of it there's going to be a you're going to need another job mm -hmm. okay because it's commission based yeah and that's okay. the, it's once once a month you get a check that's it you don't get it every week you don't get it by week you know by monthly so it's it's uh it's it's a it's the big transition um and sometimes it, it just it eats people up so mm -hmm. understanding that transition going into it yeah you're gonna struggle you know uh, but i feel uh, SPD, you guys struggle all the time anyway you guys <laughs> honestly I, there's no i don't think there's any challenges that you guys can't overcome outside of that that world so right. so um jumping into it yeah you're gonna have challenges but knowing that there is light at the end of the tunnel um and, and there is, it, 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 but 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 um, picking the right companies, weeding through those companies. Don't just jump on to the first opportunity. Do not, you know, if you know another independent, reach out to them, ask them, or even another rep, just another W two rep. Maybe they know of opportunities too. So we can be resources for 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 jobs or for, or for oh that company. Eh, you might want to reconsider a different company. You know. Okay, that's huge because you mentioned the W two and the ten ninety nine, mm -hmm. and that's a big difference. Okay, so the ten ninety nine, you're pretty much out there trying to build relationships and and promote an item. But if you're um, what was it W four? Did you say W two? Well, yeah. W two. Yeah, then that means you pretty much you got a what a consistent paycheck coming in. Yeah. So W two, right? You're set. You have a salary. You can only yes. represent one company. 
Okay. You're selling just their products only. Your taxes okay. come out. All the you know every check your taxes come out. Blah blah blah. Ten ninety nine. You get a commission, but you don't. Nothing comes out of that. But you got to plan mm -hmm. for taxes down the road. So you got to put money away okay. for taxes. You got to right. pay for your expenses. You got to. So the organization part of it's much different. You got to be a lot more organized too, not just with the different companies you're representing, but with your finances and, and, and the business side of it. Okay, I'm more of an entrepreneur. Just walking in, right? You are an entrepreneur. Yep. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah. Okay. Your freedom, it's your freedom is better. Contract. Yeah, the freedom is better. Freedom is better. Earning potential is more. Yeah, um, it is more correct. Yeah. I have one more question. So, yeah. have you ever? Enter the department where you wanted to sell one thing, and the department looked so bad, or they need they were in need of so many <laughs> other things that you had to approach in a different way. Like it was just like it was yeah. in a way neglectful of their processes and the way they were operating. Yeah. Have you ever come across that? And what did you do? All the time. Um, so the luxury, I guess, if you want to call it a luxury, is that I I do see dozens and dozens of departments, different departments from surgery centers eye surgery centers, ortho surgery centers to the hospitals to, you know, and every hospital is different too. They focus on different specialties too. So, man, I've seen that different departments where you walk in and I'm like, Oh my God. I'm like, there's no way they're doing anything. right here. <laughs> I mean, yeah. a, they have a tabletop Sonic and Da Vinci arms are sticking out of the Sonic. Yeah. So, so I, I I've seen in 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 their their answer and you know I've talked to people, some managers honestly they're they're, they're just there to collect the check and I don't like yeah. it and, and there's some managers that this is what I inherited this is the this is what I got I'm doing the best with with what I got mm -hmm. and I say that in my answers a lot I go I'm not here to promote the standards and because you guys are need to do all this stuff You're, there's going to be restrictions I'm here to make sure you have the best stuff that you can provide, you know, that you can get based on your restrictions. You know, if I could be a resource to help you get one extra thing to make your process that much easier, that's what I'm here for. So mm -hmm. yes, Bernard, many times I walked into departments thinking they're doing everything right or so to speak, or, or you know, it's a big teaching hospital, big name, mm -hmm. advertisements everywhere. You walk yeah, in, you're like, oh right. my God. Like yeah, what the, the perception does not meet the reality at yeah. all. You know, but sure. you know, the flip side, I've seen it where it does meet the reality. But my mm -hmm. God, sometimes that's the biggest shock is when you got this the, the advertising wars between these big hospitals all over you know the roads, and then you go to that department, you're like, they just bought ten million dollar robot, but they can't buy a eighty thousand dollar sonnet. Yes. Oh, crazy. Crazy. Oh, <laughs> he got. Yeah. So I've had to change tactics many times. It's not changing tactics. It's just like it's it's like I'm going in with one mindset and I'm like, oh my God, I thought I'm just helping them with a couple of things. It's like there's so many things that can go on, but you gotta be careful as a vendor. Very careful with this situation because you don't want to go in there and tell them what they're doing wrong. Yeah. That's that's mm -hmm. so I will say like it's it's easy for me to say that because a lot I have really good relationships with a lot of my customer customers so sometimes I can joke around or not joke around but like I can kind of be that that forward with them mm -hmm. but but most but most time you can't you 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 be forward as a vendor if you're if you go in and you're like oh my god you're doing that whoop, there's that wall get, get out, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, this guy wants my job <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but you got to go in and be like have that conversation hey I saw. Your da Vinci arm sticking out of your Sonic. What's going on with that? Mm -hmm. Oh well, we have that's that's what we have. We 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 I put in the budget for five years now to get a proper Sonic. Right. I can't do it. I said yeah. that's the best what you can do. Well, let's make sure that that Sonic at least is doing the best that it can do. Or or yeah. let, let's give you the other cleaning tools or other tools to make sure that 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 thing that, that if if that if that Sonic is like what I explained, guarantee you have three brushes to clean all your instruments too. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're not spending the money. Someone's mm -hmm. not spending the money. Someone's not getting mm -hmm. what, what they need. So, I, you know, there's there's something else that I, you know, that that could be that could be helped. Um, I can't sell. I'm not. I can't sell us. Tell a hospital to buy an eighty thousand dollars Sonic. But I could say, look, you're down. You have three brushes. These aren't these these work for certain things. But you need to, you know, 
the seven other brushes maybe or five other brushes you have different lumens you have different you know uh power equipment mm -hmm. talks about soft bristle brushes you know you have mm -hmm. rigid bristle brushes for the heavy down dirty ortho instruments you got uh short lumens long lumens i mean so that anyway i, I was kind of just one an example but but yeah denard it, it there's um man it, it, like i said it is a luxury to see the variety of departments that i see mm. to learn and, and discuss you know have that discussion with my customers about what i've seen at his health facilities and what i've seen at don't do this. You know, maybe a co company bought, you know, a hospital bought a piece of equipment because they thought it was going to help them. And it did the opposite. It, you know, they spent all that money now, wasted their budget and they get a, you know, a paper weight sitting on the floor or something like that. You know, I don't, you know, it's, it's just like, I've seen it all. I have, I really have. And that's definitely one of the messages I want to um, spread through creating the group and all. Um, a lot of people have the mindset that everybody's doing everything correctly and everybody has the brushes everybody has the sonic and if you say something contrary to what's in amy or what's in the standards it's like oh well, no no your patients are sick and you have a high infection rate but the <laughs> honest truth is yeah. people are getting by with little to no equipment yeah. um no uh, soft goods no brushes towels mm -hmm. all that stuff that they, they, they don't have it and they're still getting by and they're having those orthopedic cases they're having those eye cases they're having those general cases and they don't have the brushes to clean those instruments and when you say hey you don't have to use x y and z to get this result people look at you like you're crazy everybody's doing the right thing not everybody's not mm -hmm. doing the, the the right thing so you know mm -hmm. and i hope that gets out and, yeah uh, that's the, you know, my one last thing. That's it's like the sad, like the heartbreaking thing is seeing the manager and the, super, the, the the departments that everyone cares and they still can't get what they want yes. or what they need. Mm -hmm. That's the hard part. And then there's, you know, then there's managers or people I deal with that are just yes people. You know, they don't want to argue with the upstairs. They don't want to argue. Don't wanna, they don't want to be fired. They, yeah. they don't want to. They don't go back and interact with their staff. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, you know, I don't. I, and it creates mind, such a disconnect because the staff yeah. don't end up with an advocate at all. No. Um, you know, and that mm -hmm. manager is basically on no man's land because you can't commiserate with your team members that you can't support. Yeah. You can't commiserate with your peer group that doesn't support you. Yeah. So you're just out mm -hmm. there. Yeah. yeah. And you just wonder why your up. turnover rate is high. You know? And then yeah. you Nathan. <laughs> and then you're oh, 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 oh. Say what? That's why your turnover rate is high. Right? Uh, <laughs> said, this ain't rocket science, folks. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So yeah. we appreciate you. Yeah. I mean, like you said, we say it all the time. We're the heart of the hospital. We know, you know, how deep that really runs. Um, yeah. But we don't do it alone. So we appreciate having vendor partners out here like you um, that are also training other folks in the field the way that you do your work. Yes, um, there isn't any standardization there, knowing that there are people out there like us that personally take the integrity to do it the right way the first time. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, thank you. Yeah. I thank you again, person. Nathan. I really appreciate you coming out. And um, if cell processing is the heart of the hospital, there's a lot of heart disease going around. We, are <laughs> just, we have congestive heart failure right now. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot we of that We need to go on a healthy diet of patient safety standards. That's right. Oh, yeah. my God. Definitely, definitely. So, thank guys. Thank you, everybody. And thank, thank you, guys. And we'll be heading off. And thank you um, to the viewers. I see we have two viewers on right now. Thank you, guys, oh. for watching, tuning in. I really appreciate it. And we're out three two one catch you guys in the next show bye